As we read uh, the book of Acts from chapter 1 to 3, we could learn a lot, a lot about the gospel, and I'm so thankful about it. When Paul first preached the gospel, he wasn't preaching the gospel, but as he was going to Damascus, he went there to persecute Jesus. But as he met Jesus, he changed. And Ananias came and preached a word for him. And Paul, his eyes were his eyes were closed, but he was able to recover his sight. And as he was saved, he began to preach the gospel. And as Paul began to preach the gospel in Damascus, the people were trying to kill Paul. So in the night, by the bas they let down the basket to come down. And he came to Jerusalem. And as Paul, as um, as Paul was persecutors of the gospel, so when they heard that Paul was Paul, Paul converted, they didn't believe it, and there were people trying to kill Paul again. So Gilead, Tarsus, he they sent him to Tarsus. As Paul went to Tarsus in a city called Antioch. People got saved. Many people got saved from Gentiles among the Greeks. And before then, they only preached the gospel to the Jews. But as Paul went to the Gentiles' house, they preached the gospel to Gentiles and they sent Barnabas to Antioch Church. As Barnabas went to Antioch Church, Went to Tarsus, Gilead. He, he came back, came back with Paul, who was there, and for one year they witnessed the gospel. And the church of Antioch grew for one year, and there was great work that was done. And afterwards, what God did was, as Paul began to preach the gospel in Antioch. And the second mission journey that, that is what we are talking about now, as they preached the gospel in Asia the Minor, the Holy Spirit stopped them preaching the gospel in Asia the Minor. And they tried hard again, but when Macedonian showed up in his vision in the night and told them to help him, so they decided to go to preach the gospel in Macedonia. That's how they thought that that's the will of God to preach the gospel in Macedonia, and that's how the gospel spread out to Europe. So Turkey you, Turkey used to be called Asia the Minor, so passing by Greece. So he went there to preach the gospel in that region, so he was traveling around to that region to preach the gospel. As he preached the gospel, people got saved, and what Paul did then was he went he would go to the he would go to the synagogue of the Jews and preach the gospel each Sabbath day and when people heard his sermon they were they were really moved through his sermon and as they had been to many synagogues he would talk about the Old Testament and he'll talk about how Jesus was was born and he got into the gospel and preached how Jesus died on the cross to wash our sins when he talked about that many people got saved many people were happy to hear that but the Jude the, well, there, there are people of the Judaism. Even now, they don't, they don't recognize Jesus as the Messiah, but they just call Jesus as the son of the serpent. They don't consider him as the, as the son of God. Especially about Jews, their thought is so, so different from the word of God. So back in those days, the Jewish church they're only believing the, the the Old Testament, and what is prophesied in the in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, especially Isaiah chapter fifty-three. It talks de deeply about, precisely about the birth of Jesus. He was bruised for our iniquities; he was wounded for our transgressions. With his the chastisement of our peace was upon him; with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray unto his own way. The Lord had laid upon him the iniquity of us all. 
So the story is the prophecy of Jesus about Isaiah. So people they thought that Isaiah chapter 53 was not the Bible. So they thought they, they thought they, they shouldn't be reading this Bible. So what they were in was that although they read the Bible, they read only the book of the Old Testament, but they didn't accept Jesus as the Messiah. They didn't believe that. Even now, that's how they are. So, actually, when Jesus came, when Mes the Jewish, they, Jew, Jew, uh, Jewish people, they thought that when the Messiah would come, they would, they would come in a glorious way. But it was it was not the case. Actually, when he when he came, there was persecution, and King Herod wanted to kill him. So when King Herod came back, he went to the Galilee of Nazareth and lived there. And they thought, what precious things would be would come from uh, Nazareth, Galilee? So they didn't recognize them as. As, uh, as Jesus. So they didn't preach the gospel to uh, Greeks. But after receiving forgiveness of sin, the, as the Greeks received salvation, the Holy Spirit began to work. And especially when you went to the house of Cornelius, the Holy Spirit worked in their heart, in, in, in their life. So that's how the gospel is preached. So he went to many, many regions and preached the gospel. And he went to the synagogue of the Jews and preached the gospel. And what happened next was that they would then persecute them. And they, they, they stoned Paul to death. And they thought Paul was dead. And Paul was not dead. So that's how they kept on preaching the gospel. And they were persecuted so they would go to other city and preach the gospel. So they kept moving over and over again and they went to other regions and preached the gospel there in other regions but here Corinth changed when you see uh, Acts chapter 18 verse 5 and when Silas and Timothy were come from Macedonia Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ so even now, just Jewish people, they think that God will send them the Messiah. And when Jesus met, when Jesus met a Samaritan woman, when when Samaritan woman said, "When the Messiah comes," and Jesus said, "I am He," and that's how when Samaritan Samaritan woman believed in Jesus and he was she was saved. But even until then, uh, Jewish people didn't didn't believe Jesus as the Messiah. They are still waiting for the Messiah to come. But Jesus who came, think about this. You know, living in that, there are people living in that big city of Jerusalem. Jesus was from Galilee. He preached the gospel there. In the evening, where, where, where would they go? They had nowhere to sleep. You know, I talked about it before, but when I first, first came to this apartment called Richfield, there were four rooms in our apartment. And when I came, when I came in, came into that room, if I were in Jerusalem, back then, if there we had a house like this in Jerusalem in those days, would have given the three rooms, three rooms to for the disciples, and would have given one small room for Jesus, and that would be good. And in the morning when Jesus wakes up, he would take a shower, he would he would wash his hair, and it would, it would have been so nice for him if he if he could do that. So all day long as he preached the gospel, he would sleep in the mountain of olives. In the morning when he wakes up, you go to the temple again. So when I when I thought about this, do you th he, he wasn't able to wash himself well often, or he couldn't you know go change his clothes often. But what really what really what I was really disappointed about dis disappointed about was that. The house that we found in Kimchon, the owner of the house ran away without paying us back the money that we had kept in deposit. Without being able to get our money back, 
we had to go out go out but we couldn't we had, we didn't know where to go but the bank manager came to see us and asked us if we had if we knew anything about the house then they said uh, now this house belongs to the bank they said and we said okay which means we had to go out they were, they were telling us to go out but I couldn't just leave so I, it was so difficult for them it took us a couple months so one day I prayed to God for the house if before God we had no other method as we prayed a certain hearts arose in my heart I shouldn't be just praying well let me look for a house that kind of heart arose in my heart after breakfast not long later the second floor was empty back then the barber academy was very famous back then but the second floor was so good for us to have worship and there were good academies nearby it was kind of expensive and they asked us to pay $200 for the rent but so it was so expensive so because we didn't even have $10 with us so we just decided not to and we stayed like that for a while but a couple of months passed as I was praying certain heart arose in me what about what is how about the heart house you saw last time it seemed like the Lord was talking to me like that and that heart arose in me oh Lord that heart was great oh that must that must be that must somebody must have taken the house but when we went there it was not occupied it was still there and there were some kids <clears throat> so when, when we asked uh, they they had gone out somewhere so I told them if you, if your father comes back in the night please tell them that we came we had come here to look for the we came here we had come here for the house so I, I had I felt in my heart that God was going to give us the house <clears throat> So that evening we met the owner I was already I was 26 years old back then 26 years old apparently it was a, a old an old man in his uh, early 50s I said quietly I'm a, I'm a man of God I came here and decided to preach the word of God and we rented a house on a deposit plan deposit basis but the owner of the house uh, made a lawn on 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 his own house and he the house was now taken by the bank and we prayed for the house and God gave me the heart that God would give me this house we ha I have no money but if you could give me this house it will be we will be grateful the owner didn't say anything to me but for about five minutes he just started he just he thought about it quietly after about five minutes I just stayed there quietly he opened his eyes even now when I think about it I cannot forget the first thing that he told me was that I'm an elder of a Jija church in Jija church in Jija Dong in downtown. And the second thing he told me was by the national road, God gave me such a nice house. Man of God wants to use it, so what, what can I say about it? To please use it. I felt, I felt like I was dreaming but then the young the daughter of the owner of the house she was a she was a high school student she began to play some hymns in the door in the room and I felt like I was in heaven and we finished talking and I, I got up to go then the elder said okay when you come I think, it, would you come empty-handed? It, it might be kind of weird for all of us. So how much could, do you think you can prepare? 
without realizing I just spit it out, spat out the word uh, eighty dollars. Actually, the the original price was two hundred dollars. Then when he heard that, when he heard eighty dollars, he said, "Okay, that's that's enough." He said. But do I have eighty dollars? No, I didn't have that mon- that amount of money. But I ju- but I just ha- I had just said that word eighty eighty dollars. <coughs> so it was Monday, and we decided to move on Saturday. Went to the. I told the manager, bank of the manager that we were gonna we were gonna move on Saturday. Then he said, "Oh, I'm, it really breaks my heart that I feel like I'm disturbing you." And he took he took out the money. Uh, from the bank, he gave it to me. And when I counted the money, it was $10. I was so grateful. And a little while later, some lady came to our house. And when the, the f- first out we had contracted, we had paid uh, fifty dollars for the contract uh, contract contract fee, and it, but it didn't went well. We had to get the you know, contract money back, but they they couldn't give us the money back. We visited their houses several times, but the owner, the mistress, told me that they had no money with them. So they said they had no money to give us. So. They said if we could, you can get, you can take the, you know, pot or whatever it's in the in this house, but we wouldn't be able to give it the, 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 the money. So that day we were able, we, were, we, he gave, she gave us forty dollars. I was so thankful to her. And she told her, showed me, uh, the remaining ten dollars, I will pay you, I'll make sure to pay you rest later. And she bought us the remaining ten dollars later too. So. Anyway, so with the money that we got from the, the bank manager, it was, there was a brother that I know in Kimcheon, and he, heard, he, heard, he said he heard about me, that I was going through difficulties. He said he was, he was going through a lot of hardship too because he just began his business. He said he wanted to help me. He said he had about $20 with him. He said, I can, I can use it if I want to, he said. Even if you can pay me back later, it's okay, he said. But if you come to pay me back, if you can pay me, that'll be great. I was so thankful. Even now when I think about it, I'm so I'm so thankful. And it was seventy dollars. It was so, the total money that we had was seventy dollars. So there were about we, we we sat together and I told old I called all the brothers and sisters and told them tell them to take out all the money they had and we had about eight thousand eight eight dollar. You know when we we made we made eight thousand, so we were able to make uh, eighty dollars in total. On the day that we on the day that we moved, I didn't went there to help them moving, uh, but I stayed. I went out to preach the gospel all day long. And it, it began to rain. It began, the, the shower began to fall. Oh, oh, we have no... And the owner of the house where I went to fellowship, a fellowship, I said, oh, they, had, they had no umbrellas. So he told me to wait until the rain ceases. But I told him it's okay, and I just, it's okay, I can walk in the rain. And I put the Bible in my bosom, and I thought that Jesus, he would have also walked in the rain when it rained, when he was on the mountain of the leaves. And I self to went out when all it was raining. And as I was walking in the rain, I was so moved in my heart. Lord, when you were preaching the gospel in Jerusalem, you must, you must have had nowhere to sleep, and you slept in the mountain of the leaves. When I came to Seoul, I went to this uh, apartment called Richville, and there were four rooms. It was so good. I thought to myself, if I had this kind of room in Jerusalem, 
I would have given this room, I would have given this, uh, when Jesus preached the word all day long, he would come back in the house in Jerusalem. And in three big rooms, we can maybe let four of the 12 disciples to go into each room, and we can give the small room for Jesus, and he would sleep there. And there were two showers, there were two restrooms. So Jesus can use one and the, the, main, the, the other one, the, the disciples can use one, they can wash, wash their hairs. It would have, it have been good if, they, if we had that apartment in those days in Jerusalem. But Lord, when you were in this world, you had no room, you had no house, nothing. But what am I? What am I that you are giving me this kind of house? So I went out crying because I was so thankful to the Lord. Although I was not crucified, I didn't wear the thorn of, although I was not, I was not pierced by spear, but I'm, although I'm the servant of God, although I'm a weak servant, maybe God is giving me just a little. The more I think about it, when I came to Gangnam, these days in our church, our church is not that difficult nowadays. So I just have breakfast at home, and when I come here in the evening, I would go back late in the night. When I would have breakfast, a lunch, lunch and dinner, but the food of our church is so good. With some of our pastors, organizing pastors, after the lunch would have a period of time in the in the room, so I eat separately. I think maybe the meal that I have is better than maybe the meal that other brothers and sisters have outside. But I, the meal that I have is so good. Although I'm old. I eat to the point that I cannot control it. Uh, then I would tell, I would say, "Oh, I eat too much today." And I'm so thankful to God. Last time, I went to ancient church and preached the word. One of our brothers come to church. He's running. He's running a hospital in Incheon. And he told me to stop by his hospital uh, on Sunday. I went there with two elders. And uh, the couple and one nurse was waiting for me. And they gave me an injection for my knees. And I don't know what they did, but they took out my blood. And also, they got rid of some things which are not, which is bad. They with razors, they got rid of it. Two days later, the brother he called me and said, "Pastor, once in a while, they would. I've never been there for the cancer checkup." And they told me that I'm healthy. I have, not, I have no problem at all. Especially the hemoglobin rate of my body was about 14.14. So it was good. So it's me, me trying to protect myself and God protecting myself, it was not comparable. But Paul lived committing his body to God. If God let me go to go to go to if God let me go to the prison, he would go to prison. If God let me be uh, persecuted, he would go through persecutions. In reality, I protecting myself and God protecting myself, they are not comparable. But Paul, he, after preaching the gospel on Sabbath day, he preached the gospel. He read that Jesus would come. And he preached the gospel. And as is promised, that they were receiving salvation so well. So people of Ju Judaism, they didn't consider Jesus 
as Messiah, but they thought he was the he was the leader of the sect. So they were persecuting. So he would go stay there, preach the gospel, and later he would go to other cities. And he would go to other regions in Asia, and they preached the gospel, and they went to Greece, and they went to preach the gospel in Macedonia. So after doing that, they went to Rome later for the fourth mission missionary journey. And the whole Rome was saved. And you can see that. We're so thankful and thankful. But here what is interesting, as we preached the gospel, in Athen, they, they continued there on. Paul preached the gospel in Athen. There was all these philosophers there. So when you see the words that Paul preached, when he first went to the synagogue, he preached, he said something different from what he spoke in, in, in the synagogue. He said, you are noble and you're religious, you're superstitious. So he preached the words to fit their context, but, no, but hardly any of them received salvation, Nathan. And he came back to Corinth. But when you see the first Corinthians, what does it say there? In Corinthians it says, "When I dwelled among when I dwelt among you, I was so I trembled so much." He said, "Why? Because I didn't do I didn't do the witness with my own wisdom, but I did it with the wisdom of God, the Holy Spirit." In Ethan, to the philosophers, he spoke philosophically, but not many of them got saved. So he, he wrote, it, wrote the letter in Corinthian church that I decided not to know anything else but the cross of Jesus. So that's what he would say. And God was so happy. So if you go to Corinthians here, it's Acts chapter 18. Verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jews uh, named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife, Priscilla, Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. So he preached the gospel there. So as he preached the gospel, verse 5, And when Silas and Timothy were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in his spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, they shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. Before henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justus, one that worshipped God, whose house joined heart to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief rulers of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing the hearing, believed and was baptized. Verse 9, Then spake the Lord to Paul in night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not, thy, and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. In other cities, Paul, he will stay there for a while, and after a couple of days, he will move again. But when he went to Corinth, he said there are many people. He said he said that I have much people in this city, so he stayed there for one and a half years. Here, the Bible says. As Paul stayed there one and a half years, 
Afterwards, Paul went to the Corinth church of Corinth and Keba and Ablo. And from Christ, the church of Corinthians, there was a division in the church of Corinthians. When Paul was there, people heard the word of Paul. When Peter went there, people heard the word of Peter. That must have been nice. And the people were saying, I'm for Paul, I'm for Abel, I'm for Peter. There were kind of confusion in the church. The people liked different paths, different leaders. There was a confusion. And as did that, as that, as that happened, there was a lot of confusion in the church of Corinthians. And there are people committing fornication and adultery. And that kind of thing happened in the church too. So what you are thankful about before God is that in the church where these kind of things happen, as Paul wrote 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, in the end it says, and he said, I have no will to go back to Corinth, he said. If I go there, it will keep causing troubles. That's what Paul said. And even Abulo, he doesn't have any thought to go there. So you talk about that. So they had been there. And people signed up with different leaders, with Christ, with Peter, with Paul. So people there, they were all different. When they first heard the gospel, they were so happy, they were grateful. And as they were saved, they began to look down on other people. That happens to saved Christians. So that's what had happened in Church of Corinth. I think it is pretty much the same now, although we are in the same church, in our mission too, when brothers and sisters, they are not, all the pastors, they are not the same. Oh, that pastor, his word is good. Uh, that, pas that, that pastor, his word is spiritual. People say that. But they would say, that, oh, this pastor, his word is not as good. But in our church, sermons are pretty much the same, although we, know, we don't know that. When other people, they hear our sermons of any pastors in our church, they would say that, oh, those pastors they speak exactly like Pastor Oxford Park, they would say that. So when we see ourselves, we have different, we see difference, but they, when they see, there is no difference. Uh, people are saying, I like Paul, I like Peter, I like Christ. There were just kind of divisions in the church and there was confusion. There are people falling into fornication. That happened. But as we read the book of Corinthians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, what is amazing is that as Paul wrote Corinthians, he's not comparable to us. From time to time, I wrote letters to the churches. But nowadays, Zoom is comfortable, so we will talk to people through Zoom. But some people, they would fall into trials. Like sisters in Kansas City, uh, she caught cancer. Uh, we would talk, we would have fellowship personally, that happened. And there was a sister in the United States who got, who got cancer, and she went through a lot of difficulties, but she can have this uh, medical insurance cover, so she came to Korea for the medical insurance cover. So as we see all these things between brothers and sisters, People they have different tastes, different different preference. So even in the, Satan, in, even in the church, he causes troubles. Oh, Paul is better. Oh, Barnabas is better. Oh, Geba is better. Oh, Apollo is better. So through that, they cause troubles and divisions, and people they would just belong to one side of it. Actually, people they have different words. The people say, oh, I prefer his sermons, I prefer this sermon, I prefer that sermon. So people, they would have that kind of thought. So there was confusion in the Church of Corinthians. So the Church, church of Corinthians became a church of confusion. But what is amazing is, 
I'm not that good at writing words. In the morning, I'll go to church around 7, and from 7.30, we have, I, have, I have classes with missionary school students, and we're having and we have personal fellowship and also lectures on the Book of Acts. And in the evening as well, the people will come for fellowship and we'll have fellowship. And it will become like 4 p.m. in the evening. And I would have, I'll play f sports for an hour and I'll have dinner. And we'll have uh, evening worship. I'll go back home. It will be like 10 p.m. in the evening and I will just arrange certain things and go to bed. And most of the times I write my I write things on in the morning, like writing for writing script for lectures on the lectures of the book of Acts. Or usually I write them in the early in the morning. So I'll wake up at three in the morning. For two, three hours I would write. That's how I that my day my days begin. But as these things happen, Satan is so cunning. Oh, I like his sermon. Yeah, that's possible. You know, that's graceful. You know, it may give you some understanding of the Bible. You know, that would be great. When you think, oh, that's a pastor's sermon is good, that's okay. But if you say relatively, it means, you know, other pastor's sermons, that's, that's not good. Just saying that, oh, that sermon, pastor's sermon is good, that's okay to say that. Uh, who's, who's preaching today? Oh, that pastor, you always say this and that. So, like this, their heart may fall that way. Uh, sometimes our pastors, uh, missionary pastors and mission ministers in our mission, their sermons are all good. But when you fall a tempta when you fall into temptation, you'll be like, oh, I heard that before. If I heard, you hear that again, that, that'll be like 70 times. So they may you hear that recklessly. You know, that may happen. But through, through that, Satan, he causes confusions and divisions in the church. I'm for Paul. I'm for Peter. I'm for Apollo. I'm for Christ. As that happens, people, they would cause confusions, confusions in the church. And when there was a confusion in the church, what would happen? People, they would be the people they would be corrupted and there was fornication in the church of Corinthians that too is a very sad thing the church is very interesting because the work of God is great but Satan's work is great too Satan works a lot in the church as well and in the heart of man, he let us follow this humanistic characteristic. So that caused many troubles and confusions in the church conflict. So why in the church of Corinth, why did Paul stay there for one and a half year? He stayed there for a long time, right? For in other churches, he stayed there only for five days, one week, and there was persecution. He would go to all, he would move to other cities. I don't know why exactly why he stayed there for one and a half years, but Paul, while Paul was there, the church of Corinthians was so good, but as other people came, and they began to look down on Paul, and not long later, oh, the pastor's sermon was good, and there was a confusion like that, which happened again. So this happened in the church too. There's something that cannot happen, but in Satan causes this confusion and divisions in the church. People may think, oh, that sermon is very fleshly, oh, that's not spiritual. People, they may have that heart. Oh, that pastor's sermon is so good. There are people like that. But anyway, in our church, what is good if Satan works becomes bad oh that sermon that pastor's sermon is so good oh if that pastor's sermon is not as good oh I shouldn't have come today oh is that pastor preaching again today so that may cause problems 
of course, some it may the same sermon, same pastor, but sometimes when our heart is humble, he may we may feel so thankful and grateful about about it. That may happen. Until now, in our church, our church was doing well about that. The Church of Corinthians, there was that kind of problem in the church. That happened from time to time, rarely. Anyway, so far in our church, without that much problem, we stayed well. But if we just see one corner of it, what is fleshly, there are people who recognize that, people who, there are people who take that as something beautiful, interesting, beneficial. But there are people too who talk about spiritual things, but that may also cause burden, uh, cause, that may also make people to feel burdensome. What I want to talk about is that the church is good, because that's where the, the power of God, the work of God is revealed. It's very precious. But Satan wants to make us go against the church, make us feel. Satan wants, wants, Satan wants to make us feel uncomfortable. That's the uh, scheme of Satan. As I'm in the church, all the brothers and sisters they are precious, but some brothers and sisters, when I tell them certain things, they'll say yes and they will accept it, they will obey it. There are many brothers and sisters like that. But certain, certain people, they're not like that too. But when I see them, they're so precious to me. Brother Shimongsa, he drank so much. I never told him to quit drinking. But if his heart is f filled up with the faith in God, he would get away from you know alcohol. I said I I talked about that many times. For by one offering, he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. So I fought with Brother Shimongsa with that word, brother, are you perfect? No, I'm not. He would drink 10 bottles a day. So he was not perfect, he thought. She said after the marriage for three years, the brother didn't drink. When the sister met me, it was on their 23rd anniversary, 23rd year. They were going to Gyeongnam Apcham Church. The brothers and sisters, when they see me, they'll they they be like, Oh, Pastor, please come to our church. Back then, we, in Jinju, we had Christmas Kintara. It was 7, 10 p.m. in the evening. We had to go to Jinju Church and, and sleep there. But I thought, uh, today maybe I should go to Hapchan Church. I visited Hapchan Church then. When I went there, it was about 2, 12, midnight. The brothers, sisters, they had been to Kuntara and they came back, they came They came together, they came to get together in the church again, and I pushed the word there again, and one sister came crying and said to me, Pastor, I cannot live with my, I cannot live with my husband anymore. I, I've lived with him for 23 years now, but it, he'd kept drinking for the past 23 years. He doesn't do anything, he doesn't eat, he, only, he would only drink. I told the sister not to cry, and I said, maybe tomorrow morning, when there, when you have more early morning devotion, you should come with the brother. And that morning, the brother came. Already on his way, on his way to the church, he had already, or he had already drunk one big bowl of two, uh, soju, two, two, two soju bottles. Usually, we drink soju with little glass, but because he drank already, already two bottles in a big bowl, he smelled. It smelled like soju. I told the brother, I read Hebrews 10, verse 14, For by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. Brother, brother, are you perfect? He said, no, I'm not. I told him, the Bible says we are perfect, but you say you are not perfect. So is the Bible right or are you right? He said, the Bible is right. Then brother, you should be, you should be perfect, right? No, I'm not perfect. So when we see the Bible, we are. It says we are perfect. But when we look at our look at ourselves, we are not perfect. So it is the same. So in in Jesus' eyes, we can walk. In the in the Jesus' eyes, the man we can walk, but in his eyes, he cannot walk.
So are we, would we believe our thought or would we believe, our, would we believe the word of God? So although in our eyes we are, not perf- we are not perfect, we are not holy, but the Bible says, He said, For by one offering, yet perfected forever them that are sanctified. This means you are not called perfect because you are doing it perfectly, but as Jesus died on the cross for your sin's sake, He made you perfect. Do you understand, brother? He said, Yes, I understand. Are you perfect? No, I'm not. So we fought that fight. So we just fought over that one word. Later, if the, if the word of God says we are perfect, then we are perfect. Even if you are not perfect in your eyes, you should accept the word of God. I don't know if they did that maybe by force. But anyway, after 25 minutes, the brother said, I'm perfect. What do you mean you are perfect? You still drink? No, I'm perfect, I asked him. If the Lord says I'm perfect, then I'm still perfect. I'm perfect, Pastor. Yes, that's faith. What is amazing is in the morning he would wake. When he wakes up, he would take two bottles of soju and he would pour pour that in the big bowl and drink it. He would drink ten, two, ten, twelve bottles a day. And he couldn't, he couldn't stand it. So what the sister hated the most to uh, most, it is to get rid of those soju bottles. So if he had to leave with them for 23 years, he said they, he said he said they would he wouldn't be able to leave. She said she wouldn't be able to leave with her husband for 23 another 20 years. Although you think you are not perfect, what does the Bible say about you? It says, for by one offering yet perfect for, perfected forever them that are sanctified. If it says so, then you are perfect. If, although you are not, is, is, is he calling you perfect although you are not? No, if he says you are perfect, then you are perfect. If God says you are sa- righteous, then you are righteous. If God says you are holy, then you are holy. It's not about me. I'm not saying I'm righteous because I see the righteousness in myself. Although I'm dirty and filthy, but through the blood of Jesus, we are made righteous. That's why we say that. I believe the word of God more than my thoughts. Thankfully, God worked. It was, so th- it was so thankful, but we, I didn't know how, how I could describe that in words. The more I think about it, or what I'm thankful about, is that Satan, he does all, everything possible to make us fall into trials, and make us have different heart from God. That's how Satan does. When Paul went, Apostle Paul went to preach the gospel in the prison of Philippi, he shipwrecked. He was shipwrecked. He, he was beaten by serp, a serp, a viper. He went. They went through a lot of difficulties and problems. But Paul, on his way to Rome, Satan could not stop him, although there was a storm. The, the storm that occurs in the Mediterranean, that storm continued for 14 days. They, were, they could not see the moon and stars for 14 days. There was no hope of salvation. There's a saying that go back to north northwest. The storm, almost of time, it begins from equator. When the equator. When the temperature goes up in the equator, the temp- higher uh, hot wind would go upward and when it goes up upward suddenly then uh, the empty space the, the air wanting to fill up the empty space it would go it will get together at, at, at one spot and then it will cause a, it will cause a storm because the wind blows from uh, northwest side 
even now in church. So whenever the storm comes, it comes all the way up to Jeju Island, and then it moves go. It moves to Japan. So if the there is a temple, you cannot stay there for fourteen days. But this temple stayed in Mediterranean for fourteen days. For fourteen days, they could not see the seas. They could not see the stars and the moon. And you can see how Satan worked to stop Paul from going to Rome. But even so, God worked amazingly. And Paul went to Rome. How can we feel... So Paul, he went to Rome. He did not only go to Rome, but he went there to preach the gospel and fill up the Rome with the gospel. He went to Colosseum, he was persecuted. He went to Catacomb, he was persecuted. So in the in the Colosseum, many people they died. They were burned to death, or they were thrown into the uh, lion's den, or, uh, animal's den. But still, even throughout those difficulties and hardship, the gospel was alive. And for starting from the Rome, it was spread out to all Europe. In Korea, it's not been long since gospel entered here, but it's not been more than 200 years. The Puritans were in England, they preached the gospel there, but as they were persecuted, they went, they moved to America. But when they went to America, the first thing they did, they didn't build their house first. There are many animals. It, was, it must have been difficult, difficult. But they built a chap chapel first, and then they built the school, and then they built their house. That's why today the Americans, they have sent their missionaries all around the world. When they discovered New Continent America, they preached the gospel there and many people got saved. So Korea, Japan, China, around the same period of the time, the gospel came in these three countries. Nowadays, when you preach the gospel to Americans, there are many people who are surprised. I talked about how we became to open our theology school in New, in New York. I had an interview with them for about an hour. The American TV station, I talked with the, the anchor, and it was surprising to hear me that about 8,000 students, they joined our theology school, so they were so happy to hear us. It's so amazing to see God working through us. What you know, what you think, not only that, but knowing that Jesus is in my heart, oftentimes as you read the Bible, then I will be so glorified through that. We'll see you next time again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.